What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next question. So we have to simplify this expression over here. So we got the absolute value of pi minus 2 root 2 plus 2 root 2 minus pi minus 2 pi minus 4 root 2. So lots going on here. Notice we have these three absolute values and just as a quick review, remember when we have the absolute value of any kind of expression within that absolute value. If we convert that to a piecewise expression, what's this going to equal? Well, it's going to stay itself as long as that expression is greater than zero. We could even put greater than or equal to zero. Right? So if this, whatever's within the absolute value, if it's positive or if it's zero, then it just stays as itself. However, if that expression is negative, if it's less than zero, what do we have to do? We have to take that expression and we have to multiply it by negative one in order to turn it positive, right? So absolute value of two, that's just equal to two, right? Because two is positive. That expression is positive, so we just leave it. But the absolute value of negative two, notice that that expression within is negative. So we've got to multiply that negative two by negative one, and that would give us positive two, right? So that's what's happening with absolute values in general. So what we got to do is we got to figure out whether the expressions within these absolute values here is negative or positive. And let's pretend that we're not using a calculator here. So if we look at this first expression, pi minus two root two, it's kind of tough to see there whether that's gonna be positive or negative. So we know pi is 3.14, but unless you have some kind of quick way which I'm unsure of to calculate radicals or to calculate an approximate decimal for something like this, then it's kind of tough to look at it and see. Sometimes it's gonna to be totally obvious. So like if you had pi minus, let's say the square root of like 50, then you know this is gonna be negative, right? You know the square root of 50 is gonna be a lot greater than 3.14, but with something like two root two, it's kind of hard to tell. But what we can do is we can take this two root two and we can rewrite it as the two, I'm gonna write as a square root of four, then we got the square root of two, and that's gonna be the square root of eight. So two root two is the same thing as the square root of eight. So we could take this, we can rewrite as 3.14 minus the square root of eight. And notice from here, we can tell that this is gonna be positive because we know the square root of nine is three. And if we know the square root of nine is three, that means the square root of eight is gonna be less than three, for sure. And so we know that this is gonna be less than three, so 3.14 minus a number less than three is going to be positive. So that's a way you could take a radical like this, maybe convert it here, and then just kind of work your intuition to see whether it's gonna be positive or negative, that whole expression, right? So the square root of eight, less than three. So 3.14 minus something less than three is gonna be positive. So this absolute value here, we would just leave. Because that expression is positive, we're just, um, we're just leaving it as is. So that's gonna be, let's put it in brackets, pi minus two root two. And then over here, notice that this is switched up. So we have a number that's less than three minus 3.14, right? So a number that's less than three, let's pretend it's like 2.5. It's not that, but let's just pretend it is, minus pi 3.14. So we know that that's gonna be negative. That expression within is gonna be negative. So what we gotta do is we gotta take two root two minus pi and multiply it by negative one. So we could put like a minus one in front there. All right, and then over here, we got minus 
2 pi minus 4 root 2. So what's that going to be? Well, 2 pi, if we, um, if we take 3.14 multiply it by 2, that's going to give us, what, 6.28 approximately? But what about this 4 root 2? What's that going to be? Well, 4 root 2, we can rewrite as square root of 16 times root 2, which is the square root of 32. So 4 root 2 is the same as the square root of 32. So we'll have 6.28 minus the square root of 32. And then what's that going to be? Well, notice that the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So we know that the square root of 32 is going to be less than 6, right? just by deductive logic right there. So we're going to have 6.28 minus a number that's less than 6, which is going to give us a positive value. So this expression here is positive, so it's going to stay as is. We have this minus in front, and then this expression is just going to be like that. Now, if this expression was negative, there would be like a negative in front, and then this negative, this negative would turn into a positive like that, right? But because this was, the expression was positive, this minus, we just leave like that. So now notice we got rid of all the absolute values, and so we can, uh, we can just simplify. So we'll have pi minus 2 root 2, distribute the, um, the negative inside, minus 2 root 2, then plus pi. Then we got minus 2 pi plus 4 root 2, like that. And so from here, notice we'll have pi plus pi, which is 2 pi minus 2 pi, so those net out to 0. And then we'll have minus 2 root 2, minus 2 root 2 would be minus 4 root 2, plus 4 root 2, and then notice those net out to 0. Right? And so the whole expression is just equal to zero, All right? So just be careful with these kinds of questions. Sometimes, especially if you're not using a calculator on a test, uh, it could be tricky figuring out whether that expression within an absolute value is positive or negative, but you do have to figure that out first, and then you adjust accordingly, and then you can simplify.